this is Brian Ray with Mythic MTG Tech, number 335, looking at these awesome spoilers that came out on December 24th. We have, I believe, all of the Aether Revolt reprints have been spoiled. They're live on Wizard's site. Really, really cool. I'm not going to be talking about the new cards, as we've got one so far in the Masterpiece series that's been spoiled. Planar Bridge looks like an awesome EDH card, but... I'm going to cover these in another video for the new ones. This is all about the reprints that are going to be in this next set, and there's some great stuff. Let's start with the classic Black Vice here. And I'm going from what is actually the least exciting, which this is a good sign, that the least exciting is a great card. This is a card with a lot of history in Magic. This was a card that used to be banned in Legacy. It used to be restricted it was a powerhouse very, very early on when the game was much, much slower. This is a wonderful classic card. It gets new artwork. This is the type of card that I like to see included from a flavor perspective. This is not going to be the most valuable, but it's going to remind people of some really cool old historic times in Magic the Gathering. The next one here we've got is Sundering Titan. Sundering Titan is a freaking mean card. This is often a one-sided Armageddon. This is a tinker target. This is a workshop card. This is a card that's played a lot in cubes. It's super powerful. It is really, really mean. Excellent card overall. We've got Meekstone in here, another classic card. This is one of my absolute favorite cards from the original set. I played this a lot in control decks. I played it as a sideboard even more recently. The artwork on it is just beautiful. I like the original artwork because it's got nostalgia to it, but this new artwork is just so intricate and so amazing. I hated that 7th edition artwork. So sorry whoever did that. The 7th edition artwork just didn't work for me. This new artwork is just stunning. Next one we've got here is Sphere of Resistance. Really, really, really mean card. See some play in Vintage. See some play in Legacy. Just very good card. And it just annoys people to no end. Duplicate. Why does this card keep getting reprinted? I know there's a lot of fans of this card, but somebody at R&D must really love this card. This card is a decent card. I see why it made the set, but it's just really not my favorite by any means. It is reasonable overall, just not amazing. Staff of Domination. This is a card that I think should still be banned in Commander, but I understand if you're going to play combo, there's lots of other ways to play combo. If you just want to play this in a utility deck, it's crazy cool utility. Really, really nice card. I like how the new artwork was clearly inspired by the old artwork, or at least has that feel to it. It's going to look really cool. It's going to go in some great decks. Ornithopter. Oh, super happy to see this in here. This is not going to be the most expensive. This is a classic card, though. I remember opening packs and packs and packs of Antiquities and getting these and going, wow, this is a terrible card. And then Affinity became a deck, and it was an awesome card. This is really, really pretty. The Masterpiece version does... The Masterpiece version is just incredible here. I like it a lot. Next one here we've got is Defense Grid. This is a legacy sideboard card. This is the type of card you want to put in competitive EDH. It is a great card. It shuts down counter spells. People have to think twice before casting anything on your turn. Grindstone. Oh, Painter Servant. I. This is a card that is very cool, and then it goes into broken combo decks. It's going to see some play in Legacy. People are going to want that crazy cool Legacy deck with it. I can see this having some value. It is not my favorite style of card just because of the way it works with Painter Servant. If you actually want to play a Millstone deck, that's super cool. Go for it. Vidilkin Shackles. Fan favorite. Casual card. It's a little bit slow for me, but if you're playing all islands... It's great in those political games, and this new artwork just has a very different flavor to it and is going to look stunning in foil. Platinum Angel, huge fan favorite. 
beautiful new artwork for it. I can see this going in people's cubes and commander decks for years to come. Next, we've got Extra Planar Lens. This is one of the few that I'm saying, at the release date, look at what the price is. We don't have official prices yet, but I think stores may undervalue this. This card is awesome in EDH. People really love it in their ramp decks, especially the casual crowd. This is one that could be undervalued and could go up long term. Ensnaring Bridge. What a way to shut down all creature combat. Play those crazy lock decks, hellbent, no cards left in hand. This is a card that could really use a reprint. The new artwork on it is beautiful. Now, don't get me wrong, the Masterpiece Editions are not reprints. They do not affect the value of the card. They are so limited print run. But they're wonderful additions to packs. No one is unhappy when they open a masterpiece. This is the type of value added that I really like to see wizards add to packs. So I'm happy with these, but we still need several of these cards on this list to see actual reprints to bring down the value of them. Oblivion Stone. What a good Nevernal's disc. Very, very classic card. I see why Disc didn't make the list, because the stone is just better in most cases, and is modern playable, really, really popular, wonderful card. Swords! More swords! We could predict that these were coming, and I'm happy to see them. Body and Mind, this is a powerhouse in cubes. It is great in Commander. It is fun for kitchen table magic all over the place. This is a wonderful, wonderful card. War and Peace, a lot of people undervalue this card. Gaining life matters. Doing huge amounts of damage to people who have extra cards in their hand. Really, really nice. New artwork is just stunning. Oh, so beautiful. I look forward to seeing this in person. Next, we've got Trinisphere. This is one of the meanest cards in Legacy and in Vintage. I have had people pick this card up, read it, put it back down, and then play wrong against it. I've had people see, oh, Trinisphere out. Okay, I'm going to play a Mox. Oh, wait. I'm going to play a Land... Dark Ritual, play my mocks for free. No, Dark Ritual costs three. This card just shuts the game down. It stops Storm. It does crazy cool stuff. It is one of the few cards that is restricted in Legacy. Or, sorry, restricted in Vintage and Legal in Legacy. How? I mean, this card shuts Brainstorm decks down. It is so, so good. I really, really like it in the Mud decks. Pithing Needle. This is another one that I'm recommending. Take a look at whatever the price is that this gets released at and consider buying it. This is a beautiful sideboard card, cube card, extremely playable. The number of decks that can take this colorless artifact and add it to their deck for sideboards, especially with the current popularity of Planeswalkers, this card just shuts Planeswalkers down. It's very, very good for your aggro decks, very good for your control decks. I like this card a lot, and the new artwork is just stunning. Worm Coil Engine, fan favorite, casual, awesome card, and more often than not, it's good in competitive decks. There are a lot of modern decks that if you drop a Worm Coil Engine, they just can't beat you. Jund has a huge problem beating this card. Anybody who wants to play fair, crush them with a Worm Coil Engine, and this is going to be one of the more popular Worm Coil Engines out there. The artwork on it is solid. It reminds you of the older Worm Coil Engines, but has a new flavor to it. Engineered Explosives. This is one of those cards that needs a reprint. It is crazy good. It is a control favorite. It shuts down the robot affinity decks. It shuts down your infect decks. All those decks that try to do crazy things by dropping out a bunch of zero or one casters just get wrecked by engineered explosives. New artwork looks really nice. Can't wait to see it in foil. Arcbound Ravenger. Now here, I've got this as the second best card in the entire set. If I open this, I would hold it, depending on what the pre-order price is, maybe even buy it. Robots, Affinity, such a powerful deck. And this is one of those staples. There's a small threat that if Wizards ever wants to take the heart out of this deck in Modern, they could decide to ban this card. 
I hope not. There are other ways to try to temper the deck without touching the Ravager. And this new artwork on Arcbound Ravager is just beautiful. The blue lightning coursing over it. Oh, so cool. Number one spot here, I've got Chalice of the Void. Old school classic control player here. This is a counter spell that keeps giving and giving. The ability to drop this in Vintage, turn one, on zero, if you're going first, is just broken. I've been playing this with Trinket Mages in my current Vintage deck. I've even put it out there on two or three and just shut entire decks down. It's normally played on zero or one, though. Great card, solid in Modern, really good in Legacy, and amazing in Vintage. I'm going to look at the pre-order price on this and try to pick myself up. At least one of these for Vintage specifically, maybe even a full play set for Modern, depending on what I'm playing in Modern. So as you guys have seen, I've been a little bit MIA recently as I went through a move. I just got set up at my new place. You're going to see lots more videos coming soon. What videos would you like to see? Leave them in the comments. I'll take it under consideration. I'm working on Turbo Depths for Legacy. Uh, it was a request from one of the previous videos. I've got pack openings coming up. I've got an Innistrad draft set that I'm giving away in January here. I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video and then I'm going to do a five color commander deck tech. I'm going to do two versions of this deck. I'm going to do budget lands and then over the top crazy lands. I am rebuilding my super friends five color commander deck and I'm going to have that up here in a few weeks. I'm also going to be headed to San Antonio uh, next week. Um, not the first week of January, but the second week. I'm going to be there for an entire week for a conference, work-related, but I'm looking forward to hopefully getting together and playing some magic in the evenings. If you want the best tech to destroy your opponents, subscribe to the channel. If you like the stuff that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Thank you to everybody who's out there supporting the channel, especially chess.com. Challenge me to play chess over at chess.com. My username is Sartorus. And I'm actually going to be going by the name Sart more online. I've got a video coming out uh, before the end of the month talking about that. But please feel free to call me Brian or call me Sart if you see me out and about. I'm Sartorus on over at chess.com, Twitter, Instagram. My uh, personal YouTube is Sartorus. Pretty much anywhere online that you find Sartorus, it's me. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate this wonderful fan base that I've got here on YouTube. And I look forward to playing people at Magic and at Chess. Until next time, choose the cards wisely. Damn it, microphone wasn't even on. Ah, <sighs> grrr.